Welcome everyone, my name is Maria Lajos. I'm the International Coordinator of the Faculty of Business and Economics at the University of Page. I'm planning to talk a little bit about our admission procedure to our doctoral programs, uh, which are namely the Business Administration and the Regional Development programs. These programs operate with a September intake and the deadline of application is the 15th of May in case uh, of both programs. You can find a lot of information regarding these two programs on our website. Uh, one of them is the faculty's uh, English website, it's the ktk.pt.hu, and the university's uh, international website, which is the international.pte.hu. You can see the, the deadlines, the required documents on this website, and you can start your application from these websites as well. Our application surface is called DreamApply. It's a very user-friendly surface. It's really easy to get around in it. It will help you throughout the whole application process. You will see that you will be put in statuses. It will notify you if you need to do something, you need to upload something, or you forgot something. Uh, so I would suggest you to check it as you will have to use it uh, for the application. Uh, once you have chosen the, the program that you would like to apply for, uh, you have to register in this system. Uh, it's really an easy process. And then comes a bit more complicated part. It's uploading the necessary documents. The list of these documents are available on the mentioned websites, but I will go through them one by one uh, right now. Uh, first of all, you will need to upload a valid passport. In case you do not have a valid passport at the moment, you will have to upload any kind of uh, identification document uh, because we need to see that it's actually you who is applying. But later on, you will have to upload a valid passport. Uh, the next document is the master degree certificate and its official translation to English. I don't think that I need to explain that more. You will need to upload that. In case you are just finishing your master's studies or you haven't received the official degree yet, then you will have time to upload any missing document until the 1st of August, so don't worry about that. Uh, a very important part of the application documents is the transcript of records. Uh, we need to see your completed courses and we need to see the average of your results. We need to see your GPA because you can receive points for that. You can see this point system on the website as well. Uh, I'm just saying that it's a very important part. Uh, that you receive points for your GPA. Uh, the transcript of records of, uh, also needs to be officially translated to English. Uh, that's also an important part. Uh, the next document is the certificate of the English language knowledge, which has to be at least a B2 level, and it has to be from an internationally recognized uh, language exam center, for example, IELTS, TOEFL, Cambridge, and so on. We have a list of the acceptable language exams on our website, so you can check it. And you can also see uh, what points we accept, for example, the IELTS from. So please check that list so you will know what kind of certificate you need to upload. In case you do not have a, a certificate, like a language exam certificate, then you can also prove uh, your language uh, knowledge with a proof of proficiency, which uh, is issued by the university. Uh, but we can only accept it if you have studied uh, your whole master studies in English. So if the language of instruction was English, and you can prove that with an official statement issued by the university, we can accept that as well instead of the, of the language exam certificate. Uh, the next document is the CV in case of uh, a PhD application. That's a very important part. The committee and the, the doctoral school would like to see what kind of studies you had and, uh, and what, what did you do previous, uh, prior to your, to your application to, to the PhD program. You also need to upload the motivation letter here. Uh, you can see on the website what it must include. Uh, in case of a PhD application, you do not receive points for the motivation letter, but you receive points for the research plan. It has to be a two, two three page long written statement about, about your research plan, about the outlines of the, uh, of the uh, methodology that you're planning to use. And it's important to know that we run these research proposals through 
a similarity check to see if it was uh, copied from somewhere. So I suggest you to, to not to copy from anywhere because if you receive zero points for the research proposal or for your GPA, then your application will be automatically rejected and you cannot be invited for an online interview. Once you have submitted all these documents, <clears throat> We will start the evaluation process of these documents. As I mentioned, we have a, a point system that we are working with. We are checking your transcript and the research proposal, and the committee gives you points for that. And let's hope for the best that none of these receive zero points, and you will be invited for an online interview. Most likely, it will be conducted uh, on Skype, but it could be Microsoft Teams as well, or Zoom. Uh, we, will, we will figure that out, and you will be notified about the exact date and the time of the interview. Uh, the doctoral interview takes about, I would say, 15 or 20 minutes, 20 minutes at the most. You will talk to, to the head of the doctoral school, uh, professors of the doctoral school, uh, they are in the committee of the, of the admission committee and they will ask you about uh, your background, your previous studies or any kind of work experience that you have. They will ask you about your research proposal uh, because they obviously they, they read it and they, go, they carefully go through it and they will ask about it. They will ask about uh, your plans, what are your plans after finishing the the doctoral studies, and that's what you will have to talk about. It's an important part that on the website, uh, the research areas are available as well. So you can see uh, what, what we offer, which area uh, belongs to which tutor. So you can check that on our website as well. Uh, once the interview is done and the interview was successful, you can be put into different statuses in the, in the Dream Apply system. One of them is the acceptable status, which means that the interview was successful. Uh, the committee decided that, that they would like to welcome you at our faculty, and uh, if there is no missing document. In case if there's any missing document, uh, which you haven't uploaded yet, but the interview was successful, then your status is going to be conditionally acceptable. I will notify you about the missing document. I will ask you to upload it until the 1st of August, which is the deadline for uploading the missing documents. And once you, you have done it, uh, you will be also put in, in the acceptable status. Uh, in the acceptable status, the, the online system will automatically issue uh, the invoice about the tuition fee payment. You will see the bank account details of this invoice. Uh, you can make the payment as a bank transfer, but you can also make it uh, as a, it's called a simple pay system, which means that you can directly pay with your credit card in the system. It's way faster as the bank transfer could uh, take up to two weeks in certain cases. So I would suggest you if you have the, the possibility to pay with credit card, then it's way faster because it arrives immediately. Once we see that the tuition fee is on our bank account, then I will issue you the final admission letter, which includes the, the start date of the studies, the expected date of the graduation, the name of the program, your details as well. And this is the document that you need for the visa application. That's what they will ask for. Obviously, they will ask for uh, other documents as well. But this is one of the most important ones. ones. Uh, I would suggest you to to check the Hungarian embassies or consulates website in your country because they have the most up-to-date information regarding the whole process, how long does it take, how you have to book an appointment, what kind of documents you need to take uh, with you for the visa interview, for example. So I would suggest you to check it beforehand so you will be familiar with it once you get there and maybe you can make the whole process a bit faster. I think that was it about the application. If you have any questions, then feel free to email us. We will try to help you with anything we can.